We'll talk about Real Madrid in a moment and how they just seem to get it done once again in the Champions League. But the big talking point here surely has to be PSG. Yeah, just off me. Well, this is it. You were... But I don't, I, I don't think thinking they had a chance, the money bags team with this experience, I don't think thinking they had a chance was some stupid idea. But they've got to play, they've got to actually show up. I mean, they played better in the Bernabeu, yeah. apart from the final third, obviously. And, uh, but they played, they dominated midfield over there. I, I just had no confidence in them tonight in the game. Add that to the fact Verratti gets sent off. off. Add that to the fact when you get a, a good chance, Mbappe doesn't square it, do the basics. Then you're exposed at the back. I, I just never felt on tonight's performance that they looked as if they were going to get the goals. Is it as simple as if they had Neymar, this would be different? No, I, no. I, I think if you're playing Real Madrid in the Champions League, you've got to be better. You cannot afford the mistakes that PSG made. Now, you could point to, to Neymar absence and, and say a bit bad luck in, 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 in that regard, but you don't give the ball away in midfield like you did Dani Alves. You're not as poor with a clearance as Rabiot was for, for their second goal. When you're staring down the... When you're right in front of Keylor Navas and Cavani is in front of his man, you don't go for the shot. Those are just mistakes that you cannot afford to make against this Real Madrid side or you get punished. When it first came out that it was going to be PSG against Real Madrid and we were having the conversation... The one thing that I kept bringing up, and I thought it was important to realize, is that PSG hadn't faced any negativity. Yeah. Everything had been beautiful for PSG this season. Everything had been ideal. And Mbappe scoring goals, and Neymar scoring goals, and Cavani, and everybody felt so good about PSG. In this particular tie, when you look at overall, they face that negativity. They face something that they hadn't faced before. And oh, by the way, it is Real Madrid. And we didn't see a reaction from them. And so then it goes back to... This group of players that have now failed time and time and time again in Champions League, how do they overcome adversity? And they weren't able to do so today. Whether it's with Neymar or without Neymar, this team today was not going to beat Real Madrid. Not on the performance individually and as a group and on the mistakes that you're talking about. And I go back to in the second goal by Casemiro. Javier Pastore, who comes on as a substitute, loses the ball, then tracks the play at a slow jog. Mm walks into the, his own 18-yard box, and it is Casemiro who, had run, who has run past him in order to score this goal. Yes, it's a missed clearance by Rabio, but you look at the effort by Pastore, and that gives you a picture of what PSG was in this second game. Uh, and by the way, we can talk about, you know, well, I don't even want to talk about Neymar because he's not, he's not there, and he spent half the season balancing boots on his head <laughs> in the French League, you know, because that's, that's some sort of... Uh, you know, circus for PSG. But this ain't the circus. Yeah. It's the big boys, big boys' rules here. Real Madrid were nowhere near full strength. Mm. I know Vasquez and Asensio have done well recently. I know Asensio at the start of the season, he was hoping he was going to get more game time. It hasn't quite worked out. But when you've got Chris and Modric on the bench, and I know they've had injuries, then it's hardly Zinedine Zidane's preferred first 11. Sure. Yet PSG, this kind of self-anointed best team in Europe at the start of the season by some in Paris have fallen way short. I mean, I think it's a huge blow for, for anybody looking to punch a hole into the real guys that have been winning it or have been in the final year in, year out. We talked about PSG, we talked about Man City, the new guys in the block, they've got to prove themselves. Man City are going to have to do it, PSG failed. If you rewind to September, when PSG beat Bayern at at home, they look really good. Didn't they? Yeah. I think we were talking about them. They were the best. Yeah, team. but Bayern were really Bayern were struggling then. Mm -hmm. You know that. But, uh, you know Ancelotti even, was under even pressure. Having said that, they were superb. They were excellent. You know, yeah, they were no, super they were, rather the campaign. Were. How have they dropped off so much? Was it just the quality of the opposition? Is, is that is that the way to to say? It? <sighs> Let's not forget that when the first game against Real Madrid was coming up, there were quotes by Neymar saying, "I can't wait to play Real Madrid." Yeah. And let, let, let's and you know, we're so excited about this. We're looking forward to this. And it's like careful, careful. We're talking about it during the game. The Real Madrid is like a bad guy in a horror movie. You have to kill him and stab him, and make sure they're dead, dead, and kill him again and shoot him again and run over him. And they did not do that at the Bernabeu. And when you allow a team that has the talent like Real Madrid to just hang around the way that they did at the Bernabeu, then you put yourself in trouble. And it's exactly what happened here with PSG and Real Madrid. They thought that they were better than Real Madrid. And they might have been over long stretches in that first game. But you let this team hang around, and they have enough quality to hurt you. 
PSG, for as good as they have been, when you play against a real team, like it is for Real Madrid, then be careful. Um, how much is the French League handicapping PSG? Like Ali says, you know, you don't get any negativity. You get tested for the first time, really. And yeah. it's against Real Madrid well, in the knockout Well, stages. what I would say is that... that what, what, I suppose there's been two of them at times, and now we've got Atletico, uh, Atletico Madrid. But, and some others. But there has been periods where Barca or Real Madrid have been successful, and they've been shellacking. Yeah. Most teams in, in Spain, maybe it's not happening right at this moment, but it has happened before. So it hasn't always been a been a, a, a hurdle for them. So maybe, I, I, I don't know if it's maybe just, just a ready-made excuse for them or not, because, you know, I've seen Barcelona and Real Madrid at any given time wiping the floor with everybody mm. in Spain and then winning the Champions League. Yeah. So it's worked for them. Yeah, look, for me, that, that's just too easy a note for, for PSG. You know you're going to be dominating the French League just by virtue of your spending and, and, and who you have at, at your disposal. Man Manchester City are running away with the Premier League. Bayern Munich have been running away with the Bundesliga for years yep. on end. Yet still, I suspect that we'll be having a totally different discussion about them after their second legs. Now, the, the thing for me is, in September, as you mentioned, everything's going for PSG. You sign Mbappe, you sign Neymar, everything's great. As Craig points out, people are balancing boots on their head and, and, and all sorts. Now, this is where, where you have to be judged. And this, this is not about getting through the group stage. This is not about Carlo Ancelotti's Bayern Munich. Because let's remember, Jupp Heynckes' Bayern Munich beat PSG. That should have been a wake-up call. Yet still it wasn't heeded. And you see a very poor performance over two legs from PSG when so much more was expected.